One sunny afternoon, filled with the promise of baseball and doriaki, Doraemon's favorite sweet treat, turned gloomy for Nobita Nobi. He aced a pop quiz thanks to some last-minute cramming with Doraemon's answer-analyzing camera, but Ian, the neighborhood bully, snatched his perfect score. Paper. Tears welled up in Nobita's eyes. Doraemon, a blue robotic cat from the 22nd century, sighed. Reaching into his magical four-dimensional pocket, he pulled out a strange device, the switcheroo specs. These glasses, Doraemon explained, can swap the wearer's physical abilities with someone else's for 30 minutes. We can switch your weakness with Gian's strength and get your paper back. Nabita's eyes sparkled. He donned the switcheroo specs, picturing Gian's towering figure. Suddenly, he felt a surge of energy. He raced to the park, where Gian was bragging about his genius score. Hey, Gian. Nobita boomed in a surprisingly deep voice. Gian's, to be exact. Let's have a little challenge. A baseball duel. Gian, surprised by Nobita's sudden confidence, agreed. Nobita, now with Gian's immense strength, swung the bat with incredible power, sending the ball soaring over the fence. Gian, clumsy and weak in Nobita's body, fumbled every catch. Nobita, enjoying his newfound athleticism a little too much, started showing off. He accidentally launched a ball through Mrs. Mies's window. Shamefaced, he realized relying solely on strength wasn't the answer. Meanwhile, the 30-minute time limit ticked by. Nobita switched back with Gian, who was now furious about the broken window and his terrible baseball performance. Thinking fast, Nobita grabbed another gadget from Doraemon's pocket, the truth massage glove. This glove, when used, forced the wearer to confess the truth when touched. Nobita approached Gian, a nervous smile on his face. Hey, Gian, he said, holding out the glove, want to try a cool massage gadget? Gian, suspicious but intrigued, agreed. As Nobita gently massaged his shoulder with the glove, Gian blurted out, Okay, okay. I took your paper, but you wouldn't have gotten a perfect score anyway. Nobita, relieved, explained the whole situation with the switcheroo specs. Gian, embarrassed and realizing Nobita's true strength came from hard work, reluctantly apologized and returned the paper. Later, enjoying a well-deserved plate of doriaki with Doraemon, Nobita learned a valuable lesson. True strength came from a combination. Ahoy there, matey. Gather around and listen close, for I'm about to tell you a tale of high seas adventure, buried treasure, and shiver me timbers. Pirates, the story of Treasure Island. Our yarn begins at the Admiral Benbow, a cozy inn run by young Jim Hawkins and his widowed mother. 1. Stormy night, a gruff old sailor named Billy Bones arrives, seeking refuge. With a mysterious sea chest and a constant fear of a one-legged man, Billy becomes a source of intrigue for young Jim. Tragedy strikes when a black spot, a pirate's mark of death, is delivered to Billy. He falls, ill and soon meets his end in a brawl. Jim, with a quick mind and a pounding heart, escapes with Billy's treasure map, a boozy doctor named Livesey, and the brave squire Trelawney. Their quest for Captain Flint's legendary loot leads them across the ocean on the Hispaniola, a schooner captained by the seemingly trustworthy Long John Silver. But beneath Silver's charming smile lurks a pirate's heart, for he secretly plans a mutiny to claim the treasure for himself. 
Jim, acting as cabin boy, overhears Silver's plotting and becomes entangled in a web of danger. When the Hispaniola reaches the treacherous treasure island, Jim sneaks ashore and encounters a marooned sailor named Ben Gunn, who offers cryptic clues about the hidden riches. Meanwhile, the Hispaniola's crew erupts in mutiny, leaving Captain Smollett, Dr. Livesey, Squire Trelawney, and Jim to fight for their lives. Jim, with his youthful agility and newfound resourcefulness, becomes a thorn in Silver's side, leading the loyal crew on a desperate struggle for survival. As the hunt for treasure intensifies, the group faces treacherous swamps, booby traps, and the ever-present threat of Silver's pirates. Jim, relying on his wit and courage, outsmarts his enemies and navigates the dangers of the island, ultimately leading his comrades to the hidden treasure cave. But greed and betrayal cast a shadow. A tense showdown ensues, and loyalties are tested. In the end, with in a cozy burrow beneath a towering oak tree lived a family of fireflies. Pip, the youngest, wasn't quite ready to shine like his older siblings. Their twinkles illuminated the night, guiding lost creatures and painting the meadow with a magical glow. Pip, however, could only manage a faint flicker. One evening, feeling left out, Pip confided in Luna, a wise old owl who lived in the oak. Don't worry, little Pip, Luna hooted softly. Your light is unique. It might not be bright, but it could hold a special magic. Pip's tiny heart flickered with hope. What kind of magic? Luna smiled. The magic of finding things lost in the dark. Pip spent the next few days practicing his little flicker. He'd light up fallen leaves, helping lost beetles find their way back to their trees. He'd guide lost ladybugs back to their ladybug clusters. One stormy night, the wind howled, and rain poured. Pip peeked out of his burrow. A baby robin had fallen from its nest, chirping in fear. The nest was high in the oak, and the rain made climbing impossible for the other fireflies. But Pip's small light could pierce the rain. He bravely flew up the oak, his tiny flicker leading the way. He found the shivering chick huddled on a branch, cold and scared. Pip, ever so gently, nestled against the chick, his warmth chasing away the chill. The chick, comforted by Pip's light and warmth, chirped happily. Hearing the sound, Mama Robin swooped down, her worried chirps turning into relieved cause as she saw her chick safe with Pip. The storm passed, and a rainbow stretched across the sky. The other fireflies gathered around Pip, their lights brighter than ever. Pip, you're a hero. They buzzed excitedly. Pip, his little light glowing proudly finally understood Luna's words. His unique light wasn't just for finding lost things. It was for finding the kindness that shines brightest in the dark. From that day on, Pip became the nightlight of the meadow, a reminder that even the smallest light can hold the biggest magic. Nestled within the peaceful valley of peace, nestled beside Mr. Ping's noodle shop, was a hidden training ground. Here, under the watchful eye of Po, the dragon warrior himself, a new generation of kung fu masters were taking their first wobbly steps, the jade cubs. This wasn't your typical training ground. Forget intense drills and bone-crushing exercises. The jade cubs were little, barely taller than a dumpling steamer. They were bow. A boisterous red panda with a boundless supply of energy, Nuohan, a shy but focused lesser panda, and Mei, a quick and clever raccoon kit. There. First lesson. Not mastering the crane style or the Furious Five's signature moves. Today, Poe was teaching him the most important skill of all. 
Noodle serving. Balance is key. Young cubs. Po boomed, wobbling a giant tower of noodle bowls on his belly. Bao, Mei, and Nuohan watched in awe. Their tiny bowls trembling in their paws. Suddenly, disaster struck. Mr. Ping, rushing out of the shop with a tray of dumplings, accidentally bumped into Po, sending the noodle tower crashing. Noodles scattered, broth went flying, and the jade cubs yelped in surprise. Dejected, the cubs looked at the mess. Po, ever the optimist, chuckled. Don't worry, little friends. Even the dragon warrior has noodle fumbles sometimes. Today, we learn from our mistakes. Thus began Operation Noodle Rescue. Bao, with his panda strength, gathered the fallen bowls. Nuohan, known for his careful, poor work, used chopsticks to meticulously pick up stray noodles. And Mei, nimble and quick, scurried around, mopping up spilled broth with a dishcloth. Working together, the jade cubs cleaned up the mess in record time. Mr. Ping, impressed by their teamwork, offered him a brand new batch of noodles to serve the hungry customers. As the cubs balanced trays of steaming noodles, their confidence grew. They learned that Kung Fu wasn't just about fighting, it was about discipline, focus, and helping others. Suddenly, a loud commotion erupted from the street. A group of mischievous monkeys were swinging on the noodle shop's awning, stealing dumplings. Po grinned. All right, cubs. Time to put your skills to the test. The jade cubs, fueled by excitement and a dash of righteous fury, used their newfound balance and agility to dodge the monkeys' playful swipes. Bao used his strength to block a flying dumpling, Mei used her speed to trip a monkey up, without hurting him, and Nuohan, with surprising boldness, used his noodle tray as a shield to deflect another monkey's grab. Seeing the cubs work together, the monkeys started laughing. They realized these little ones weren't some pushovers. Soon, they were playing a friendly game of tag with the jade cubs, swinging through the town. Square with joyous shrieks. News of the jade cubs' bravery spread throughout the valley. They may not have been mastering the five furious fists yet, but they were proving that even the smallest paws could make a big difference, one noodle bowl at a time. Ricky the rabbit was the fastest critter in Sunny Meadows. He could zoom past dandelions, outrun butterflies, and leave dust trails behind him. 1. Sunny morning, Ricky was bragging to Timmy the turtle. Look at me, Timmy. I'm so fast, I can be at the sunflower patch and back before you even take one step. Ricky boasted, twitching his whiskers. Timmy, munching on a juicy clover, just smiled. Speed isn't everything. Ricky, slow and steady wins the race, you know. Ricky laughed. Race, you and me, that's a joke. I could run circles around you. Timmy, unfazed, challenged. Why not prove it then? Let's race to the big oak tree at the edge of the meadow. Ricky, confident in his lightning speed, readily agreed. They set a starting line by a ladybug's house and with a chirp from a cricket, they were off. Ricky shot forward like a furry rocket. He zoomed past wildflowers, hopped over streams, and was halfway there before he stopped to take a breath. He looked back, expecting to see Timmy far behind. But, to his surprise, Timmy was closer than he thought. The little turtle was steadily plodding along, never stopping, never getting tired. Ricky chuckled. He's so slow, I can take a quick nap and still win. He settled under a shady mushroom for a snooze. Meanwhile, Timmy, with his slow and steady pace, kept moving. 
He didn't stop for breaks or distractions. Inch by inch, he got closer to the oak tree. When Ricky finally woke up, feeling refreshed, he saw something that made his whiskers twitch in panic. Timmy, the slow and steady turtle, was already reaching the finish line. By the big oak tree, Ricky scrambled to his feet and dashed forward, but it was too late. Timmy, with a triumphant smile, had crossed the finish line first. Ricky, surprised and a little ashamed, congratulated Timmy. Wow, Timmy, you really are amazing. I guess slow and steady does win the race. From that day on, Ricky still loved his speed, but he also learned the value of perseverance and never underestimating someone who might